Organizational complexity builds an intricate web of dependencies that can snare even the most experienced project leader. Senior management look for status reports to understand which projects and what problems to focus attention on. However, many company systems and processes come about organically through companies solving urgent problems in an ad hoc manner. The inevitable result is slow, error-prone manual processes develop. They become embedded in your organization as the way things have always been done, creating a future barrier to change. Companies just get by through a combination of glue and popsicle stick solutions, using extracts from various systems to try to pull together to provide an integrated view of the organization. However, these solutions involve lots of manual workarounds, with rekeying data into multiple systems. Inevitably, some reports developed in one system do not align with reports from another team. Then, rather than senior management focusing their time solving strategic problems, they then spend their time working out why these reports vary in their analysis. Different divisions, projects, joint ventures and successive senior management appointments each have their own reporting requirements and develop their own reporting solutions. Over time, this creates a hodgepodge of overlapping systems, processes and reporting formats. Companies invest in many systems producing similar versions of the same report with different results, causing confusion. Just to populate a simple dashboard covering latest status of cost situation, quality issues and outstanding invoices to be paid can involve using lots of extracts from a variety of system islands. Companies get by having superstars writing this spreadsheet radio each month to make this non-existent system work. And all the while, critical questions of running multiple projects are not properly addressed, like does each project contribute to the overall achievement of the portfolio? How well is each project performing? Will any project have an adverse impact on other projects to come? What projects in portfolio are dependent on others? Will the successful delivery of all projects produce the desired objective or benefit which we need as an organization? In this video tutorial, we shall quickly explain what value can be added to your company from standardized portfolio reporting tools combining source data from different systems. How to write a report specification to ensure that you get the automated portfolio status reporting that you want. We'll give some real-life examples of best practices for PPM reporting, focusing on variance and exceptions reporting. Project portfolio management and PPM tools help companies break down every detail of a proposed project, budgets, resources, tasks, timelines and goals. Using in-depth analysis of proposed projects weighed against current projects, a company can define what risks offer the most rewards. Portfolio reports help to display the soft links between multiple sub-projects and display the resource coordination required between projects and department heads like engineering and procurement within a matrix organization. Resource forecasting which is aligned with your order book to allow you to have the right type and level of resources at the right time. Here you can see an example of a chart showing expenditure against each month of the program, together with a cumulative view of the total expenditure against the program break-even rate, BER, projected cash flow. As you can see, these reports help to schedule activities, record actual hours expended and calculate internal break-even rates to be more easily reported. Organizations can then raise invoices and track their commercial position and profitability to manage their risk exposure. Using key indicators that illustrate costs versus returns, organizations are able to determine whether a project should go forward. Standardized reports can be run directly without manually rekeying data into different systems. The benefits come from enhanced profitability through more efficient capital expenditure, CAPEX, and operating expenditure, OPEX, from doing things right the first time, better asset management, and better resource management. Portfolio management ensures that an organization can leverage its project selection and execution success. Because the number of potential projects that can be selected is greater than the number of projects that can be funded, managers face the problem of selecting a portfolio that maximizes the expected benefits. And this is essentially what portfolio management is, the centralized management of one or more project portfolios to achieve strategic objectives. 
Whether organisations formally recognise this discipline or not, it doesn't matter. If you deliver many projects, you use this discipline without knowing about it. At the same time, executives need to be mindful that not all projects work out as expected. Portfolio management decisions are therefore based on a trade-off between return and risk. Risk quantitative measures such as Monte Carlo modelling or Value at Risk VAR, allow senior management to understand the potential loss of a portfolio over a specified trading horizon with a given confidence level. These risk quantitative measures also allow decision makers to organise and compare investment schemes and how risk management can help lower operational risk. Portfolio management is not just a software issue that can be resolved via a quick ordering of the latest trending PPM software through the IT department. It entails organisations thinking hard about the key value drivers for their company, such as, do I have the resources or budgets available to take on this new project? What current projects might act as a barrier to completing this project? Are the stakeholders' expectations realistic? Where can we compromise? Is there alignment between the existing project portfolios with the strategy of the organisation and is the right governance structure in place? Does this project help reach our overall objectives as an organisation? And so, any reporting solution needs to be supported by business processes. It requires that there is a project evaluation process used to evaluate the projects at various points during their life cycle to check if it is failing and whether it is still able to achieve the portfolio's objectives. Frequently, companies use consulting diagnosis frameworks to do this, like SWOT, BOSCARD and PESEL analysis to firstly shape their portfolio. SWOT – Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities and Threats BOSCARD – Background, Objectives, Scope, Constraints, Assumptions, Risks, Deliverables PESEL – Political, Economic, Social, Technological, Legal and Environmental Capture proposals with supporting business cases and prioritise against business drivers and existing workload. Load budgets and cost estimates in project schedules, then track progress and report variance during execution. Plan the detailed scope of work with deliverables, milestones and resource assignments so you can visualise the soft links between projects. Establish resource capacity baseline and capture work demand to identify staffing bottlenecks. Track actual progress to date, reforecast based on estimates to completion ETC, and roll-up portfolio reporting. Monitor data quality and compliance to scheduling standards across all projects and resources in the portfolio. In the real world, however, these reporting solutions are not as simple or as turnkey as perhaps a software vendor's marketing material may have you imagine. This is because the data that is required to populate one report may not just come from one enterprise system, it may come from a number of them. In the real world, these integrations can take on as many combinations as there are systems. Let's use a simple example as an illustration. A company may book their time, manage their assets, revenue, accounts payable receivables, etc. in their Enterprise Resource Planning ERP, and Enterprise Asset Management EAM system, like BAM or SAP. However, they may schedule their projects in another application like Primavera or MS Project, and use another system like Deltec Cobra to produce earned value performance metrics. Other systems may separately be involved to manage change requests, for example CRAM or Primavera Unifier, develop their cost estimates, for example Nomitech Cost OS, or manage their risks, for example Active Risk Manager. Each of these systems are best in class for their specific function, and in a program dashboard covering cost, schedule, quality, asset volumes and risk metrics, you may need to use data from all systems. Moreover, different parts of one report, not just different parts of one reporting pack, can come from many systems. Many software vendors would just say, simplify everything into one system. Sometimes this straightforward solution is not possible. Also, the integration of different enterprise systems can allow businesses to have a better and more accurate view of their organisation and projects. Better forecasts from specialist planning software like Primavera can inform the percentage of completion POC reporting in SAP and what the likely estimate at completion EAC would be. In order to take advantage of the best of each application and be able to integrate the data, 
it's important to know how the different datasets will be joined, at what level of resolution will they be reported, what will be the unique identifiers which will allow data from different systems to be joined together and correctly reported. In building bespoke business applications and business intelligence solutions, at Dada we found it useful to start with the end in mind. Unfortunately, companies sometimes spend a lot of money on expensive applications only to find that they do not get the reports they thought they would get at the end. So, writing a report certification before any significant IT investment can ensure that the right systems, right processes and governance structure are in place. The components of a report specification would be business reason, the business requirements and justifications, why is it needed, who buy, and what will they use it for? Frequency and time. How often will the reports be required? Who will trigger them? For example, will they be run automatically or by a manual trigger? Authorizations. Who will be able to run the reports? What access rights will they have? This introduces the concept of role-based access rights, ensuring each project member and manager sees the reports intended for them, seeing instead of searching for the right information. Processing mode. Will there need to be any background jobs run before or after the reports are run? For example, will there be a need to make accruals for late timesheets? If so, will these accruals need to be reversed out in the next period so that the real actual hours worked can be reflected? What is the general ledger code they will use? Prerequisites. Any objects or processes that need to be complete before running the report. Output medium. Business Explorer, BEX, Web report, CSV, PDF, Excel, Word files, etc. Will these reports be put into a special destination folder or published online to provide a single repository for the enterprise? Do there need to be specific distribution lists for different reports? Does a covering email need to accompany the report? How will end users want to cut and slide the data? Will this mean changes to the cost breakdown structure and chart of accounts and organizational structure? Do you need a drill-down functionality from the top-level portfolio overview through to the individual projects and all the way to the individual work packages and cost accounts where there's a problem? In some cases, companies may have global operations and will need to decide whether reports should be in the transactional currency they occurred in or will there be a global reporting currency. If there will be a reporting currency, then what will it be and will they use floating exchange rates or pegged exchange rates? Further, will there be currency hedging? Will there need to be ad hoc calculations performed on the source data? For example, will you be charging for accommodation allowances on certain staff? What will be the acceptance criteria to get the initial reporting templates signed off and by whom? Who will accept and run the period reports thereafter? Will there be a requirement to pull data from project sites such as on Primavera Unifier or SharePoint and integrate this with schedule and cost data from different sources? As you can see, enterprise portfolio tools decrease the reliance on multiple applications that can increase overhead and confuse workflows. They can allow the quick mining of data and coordination with all team members to provide real-time status updates. They provide accurate job costing to track the progress of each job and accurate forecasting of cost to complete for each job. Hopefully, you can see why we believe Project Portfolio Management, PPM, allows business to have a better and more accurate view of their organization and projects. We at Dada believe it helps companies to schedule activities, record actual hours expended, and calculate internal break-even rates to be more easily reported. They help to trigger the raising of invoices and track the company's commercial position, profitability, and risk exposure. Thank you for viewing this video tutorial. Please get in contact to hear how we can offer you a free project audit to benefit from some of the concepts discussed here.